Good evening and welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle with your host Ki Lun Yasha and engineered by Arnel Valle. Uh, tonight our guest is Dr. Ricardo Alvarez, who is the medical director of Clinica Esperanza, the Mission Neighborhood Health Center's HIV clinic, a multidisciplinary clinic serving the needs of mostly Latino, uninsured or underinsured HIV patients. Clinica Esperanza is one of the pre premier HIV clinics in the city of San Francisco. It creatively engages in theatrical and artistic expressions of the community to tell the story of HIV. Dr. Alvarez's research interests include medication adherence and institutional distrust, which we will be discussing this evening. Uh, inaugurated in 1989 by the Mission Neighborhood Health Center Board of Directors, Clinica Esperanza, Clinic of Hope, provides a wide range of services to over 400 enrolled HIV patients each year. Clinica Esperanza was one of the first community-based health service services centers in California and the U.S. to build a continuum of HIV prevention and treatment services focused on the needs of the Latino community. And now, without further ado, I want to give a warm welcome to Ricardo Alvarez. Welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle. Thank you, Kilo. I'm, I'm honored to be here and honored to be your guest. And uh, Ricardo, I just have to say that uh, I've known you for many, many years, you and your lovely family, and, uh, but I've known you in your capacity as an activist and supporter of the International Concerned Family and Friends of Mumia Abu Jamal. So you wear a few different hats. Um, Ricardo, please tell us um, about Clinica Esperanza and your association with it. For the last 12 years, Kilo, I've been medical director of Clinica Esperanza, and it's been a privilege to work with my colleagues. The concept is to have a multidisciplinary uh, model of care, and multidisciplinary is essential. Um, our patients, as you know, uh, have to cross uh, borders of nations and boundaries of cultures. There's issues around gender identity. Many of our patients have been uh, uh, sexually abused and molested. They're deep, deep wounds that they're suffering. And when they come here, many of them are very impoverished, oftentimes addicted to different kinds of substances, drugs, and they're surviving on the margins of our society. And what we find is that um, our patients, there's sort of this deficit model that acknowledges them as being poor and having all of these faults, but we, what we find is a tremendous strength in their capacity to survive, and we want to support them in that strength, and, to, uh, and we, we also recognize a tremendous artistic capacity. And they started off uh, about 10 years ago with the first art show. We've had three since then. There's a Miss and Mr. Gay Safe Latina event that's done with our sister institution, uh, which is Instituto Familiar de la Raza, where we couch safe sex messages through the use of theater. And it's very important that our clients tell their own stories about HIV and AIDS. And here we're shifting from a deficit model to one of an appreciation of their strengths, using the artistic uh, modalities to tell this story, and we find that that translates into a better self-esteem, and it also translates into better prevention and better adherence to medications. I'm sure. And what, what are some of the uh, ways that you practice uh, with your, have your, have your patients practice prevention? Well, we have a, a very rich um, prevention. And we're talking prevention of HIV. And That's other, correct. Uh, trans, uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Right. Again, as a multidisciplinary model, oftentimes prevention occurs with uh, perhaps meeting with case managers and sharing um, stories of risk behavior. And if we can approach our patients from a non-judgmental position, where we're open and not judging them and listening and then provide uh, counseling in the manner of uh, harm reduction 
which which acknowledges that a particular behavior is harmful how can we reduce it and that's a different philosophical approach to one of for example saying abstinence abstinence only and if you needed an analogy it would be the idea that you know uh, the you, you you can use condoms would be more a harm reduction model acknowledging that sexual impulse is a part of the human condition and a reality and another model would be abstinence only and if we look at the data uh, in fact uh, the abstinence only uh, models have not proven to be uh, highly successful well s certainly not <laughs> <laughs> well but um, I, you know just for those who uh, may not be too clear on on some of your language um, what what exactly do you mean by the deficit model a deficit model basically sees a community that might be impoverished substance abusers and have uh, schizophrenia and all all manners of problems and social problems, social problems, emotional problems, right. and then someone who may have gone through extensive schooling may approach it and say, "Well, you know, we're the experts, and here's the solution." Well, well there's a problem with that. Really, real. what we're acknowledging is that the fact that they are before you is a testament to their survival. Essentially, an aspect of healing, and when we talk about deep spiritual wounds, an aspect of healing is healing at this deep level, these wounds. And that comes from a place of comfort and trust with someone who sits before them. And to the extent that we receive government funding, we see ourselves as being responsible to our communities. This is really the funds of our community. And our responsibility is to try to earn their trust and work with them in a way to help them understand the principles of this disease and help them move forward. Now, one example, Kilu, of how we've done that is we've had many patients who've come to us and have, uh, as a result of our advocacy with lawyers, have received political asylum, over 120. These were patients who violated, who would never think of violating the first rule, which is you never present yourself before authority in this nation. They were living on the margins, and that's radically transformed their lives. They're now engaged in employment. They now have some prospect of being, of voting, some prospect of, of ownership of, of homes, all of these things that were un, un, unimaginable before. It also it builds their self-esteem, and these, this is just one example of how, of, of, of how we can radically change uh, a lifestyle by just offering counsel and advice on matters of political asylum.